Well, I don't see Moon Knight behind you. What's going on here? But I'm wearing a Moon shirt. I do see that. That's pretty dope, my friend. <laughs> awesome, awesome. There's no listen. There's no uh, Moon Knight cool collectibles yet, uh, but that will happen soon. They're coming. They're coming. Oh. I think. I think what's going to be on the shelf soon is going to be really exciting. I I am confident. I like the 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 ridiculous stuff. But anyway, um, do you think that Moon Knight? I think um, that some of the characters of the MCU. It's it's good that they happened later in the development of the MCU because the audience is primed for Agreed. like you know further kind of things. Um, do you think Moon Knight could have happened before this, or do you think Moon Knight is a result of everything that's happened previously? Hey, with the genius of Kevin Feige, Moon Knight could have been the first one out of the gates. So that guy can do anything. He's an incredible storyteller. What I do th- agree with you on, I do think this was a character that is able to um, kind of go in the wake of some of the rest of the MCU. But also, I think really the time, why the time was right for this is really also the Disney Plus platform. This is such a complex character. To have a platform where you get multiple episodes, five hours, six hours, to tell this complex story, I think that's what we needed more than anything. I think we needed a broader, can- a broader canvas that took this much time to present itself more than anything. Yeah, one of the things about Moon Knight that I like is some of the MCU series are a little shorter, and these episodes are actually like 50 minutes. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the last two are, but um, can you sort of talk about that? These are, um, you really pushed it for the six episodes. We did. I mean, you know, um, from what you know about this amazing character that goes back to 1975 and, and Werewolf by Night and then 1980 for his own series. Over the years, over the decades, there's so many complex storylines that we were able to choose from, so many complex themes to choose from that we really had trouble containing ourselves to, you know, 45 minutes, give or take, per episode. Because what the what the writers and the um, pencilers and the and the artists were able to do over the years was mesmerizing and entertaining, and it presented a very rich, complex character. And the real challenge of this was not what to add, but sadly, what was you know, what to take away. And the beauty of that is all that stuff still remains. And then some with this character that I think the fans, I think are going to enjoy this ride that we take them on and they're going to want to see more. During the development process of the show, I always am curious about what almost happened. So what almost happened with this show? Was it ever a radically different storyline? Did you ever almost go in a different, you know what I mean? A different direction? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I don't know the right almost happened. I can tell you this. I can tell you why this story happened because we were in the writer's room and we've been developing for a while with the great Jeremy Slater and the team of writers that we had in the room. And we were coming up with some really good ideas and we were having um, some solid um, narratives that were really exciting us, but we hadn't found it yet. Um, And I was in the kitchen at the at, at Marvel studios and Kevin came in, he asked me, how's it going? Um, how's the story going? I kind of told him, I said, we're getting there, we're getting there. We're, we're still looking for certain aspects. And he said, hey, I absolutely remember being a kid in Brooklyn and my parents putting me on a train into Manhattan and standing in line, in a line that wrapped around the block as I was waiting to get into the latest Egyptian art exhibit that was going through the country. And he said, you know, the excitement I felt standing there in line and then how mesmerized I was by the art and the architecture once I got inside. He said, if we can grab onto that excitement I found as a kid with all those Egyptology aspects and just the natural globe trotting narrative that Moon Knight has and specifically his origin story. If we can lean into that, we have a series that will span 45 minutes an episode. And um, that really was our North Star from then on. And so it's really not about the um, what we lost. It's just what we gained and what truly gave us the fuel and the narrative engines. And that was one of the days, you know, you have various touch points. I mean, you've been in similar situations. There's various touch points, but that was a day that we really found uh, the fuel that would be our fire to this day. Yeah. This Kevin Feige guy, I think he's going to have a career. I think he's going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of, <laughs> you know, he's kind of okay. Um, I'm just, he, he's so good. I don't think people realize though, like, like what he's done is impossible in terms of the MCU. It's truly impossible. And like, it's notes like this as to why he's who he is. No, you know, you know, it's not only um, in the MCU. I mean, you got to look at the broader film, um, you know, art 
and what he's doing and what the rest of the team at Marvel Studios is doing is truly remarkable. And I don't know if it'll ever be replicated. I can't imagine a scenario in which it will be. It's it's mesmerizing and it's an honor to be part of that team. But uh, it's an incredible team, I got to tell you. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Um, for soon to be fans of the series, uh, is there anything that you think they might be surprised to learn about the actual making of Moon Knight? You know, we had such a great production design team. Um, you feel like you're everywhere at once. You know, we can't step into every um, location and actually be there. But, you know, to tell the fans that we told this globe trident adventure and we did go to London, we did go to obviously we shot in Budapest and we were in Slovenia and we were in Jordan and Wadi Rum and the Aqaba Desert. Um, just to tell the fans that, yeah, the vast majority of this is shot in Budapest. Um, I don't think it'll blow their minds. People know um, the value of an incredible production designer and green screen and everything else. But just to see this story told on the world stage, pretty cool. Also, I'm, I, listen, I watch a lot of stuff. Uh, the Some of the sets that they built for this really looked incredible. Uh, like they yeah. looked beyond what you would expect. You yeah, know? I, I, I'll tell you this story. And I can't unfortunately tell you the set's name because it is a spoiler. But I was standing there with Ethan Hawke on this day of filming. And this was well into halfway filming. Um, and he was just sitting there looking around. And he just leaned over to me and he said, man, I've been doing this for 30 years, give or take. And every day I continue to walk on these sets and my mind is blown. So you're talking about a storyteller and Ethan is at the top of his game, both in front of the camera and behind the camera, who steps onto these sets and he's seen stuff he's never seen before. And that artistry and craftsmanship that goes with it. Um, I think that tells you the level at which Stefania Sella and the rest of our um, department heads were playing. And it was it was amazing. Yeah, no, it looks incredible on screen. Have to ask you, um, I know this is going to be a big hit with audiences, uh, and I know you'll be guarded with this answer, but have you guys talked about like the future of Moon Knight in terms of could there be a season two? Because some of the MCU shows are are doing a season two. Yeah, and believe me, you're smart enough. You you already know part of my answer. It's a great question for Kevin. But what I will say is this: because we delve into so many interesting tones in the tapestry we eventually weave together with this show, the action adventure globe trotting, the bump in the night horror aspects of it the mental health character study, the humor. I do think wherever Kevin wants this character to go in the future, I don't think there's any corner in the MCU that, that Moon Knight cannot inhabit naturally. Um, and that is a testament not only to the character on the page, but the character that Oscar Isaac brings to, brings to the screen. I definitely want to ask you this. If you, you obviously, making the first season of any show is a huge eye-opening experience and what you learn during the making what did you learn making the first season that if you were to make a second season, you would take with you? I would take this amazing cast with me. And if it can't be this cast in the future, people um, and artistsmen and craftswomen um, who are at the top of their game, just like Oscar, Ethan and May are, um, that makes my job so much easier when these actors and, you know, I, I got to say this, too. I don't look at Oscar and May or Ethan as actors. I look at them as storytellers and the paintbrush they paint with is acting. Um, the dedication they brought to this was just invigorating. And it helped, you know, after being on this show for well over a year and a half, by the time they came aboard, I needed that that B12 shot and they brought it. So that's what I would really take with me. I would take this cast. And if it can't be this particular cast, um, one that brings the same dedication to it. And obviously that dedication on the director's end as well. Um, it just makes my life so much easier. Uh, that's what I would take with me. On that note, I got to stop. Uh, it is always interesting doing these interviews where I can't talk specifics yet, even though I've seen it. You know what I mean? It's just the nature of MCU stuff. But thank you so much for your time. And thank you. On the series. For real. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too.